So, I think my fan died last night. Um, I could kind of hear going out. It was making some squeaking noises and stuff. And I think this thing's probably for 60 or 70 bucks. I can't remember how much. But, um, yeah, it feels like the fan locked up. I can't tell. Let me grab something and I'll see if I can spin it in there. But, um, yeah, I thought I'd take it apart and see if I could fix it before I just throw it away. Or see if there's any good parts I could use for someone else. I wonder if this is an AC or DC motor. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, the. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's totally locked up. So maybe I can get it off these snap ring pliers. The snap ring pliers have like little tips on them. So I was able to grab it. And here's a close look at the anti tamper proof screw. So, yeah, as you can see, I had the little notches in there. That's annoying. It's one of those anti tamper proof screws in there, too. Hmm. Alright. So, found this old screwdriver. So, I'm going to see if I can grab my Dremel and notch out the center that I can grab onto it. So, if you're new to my channel and you've watched, subscribed to my channel, because my 3D printers. Um, so, if you look at my channel, like all my most popular videos um, are all either car repair related or house repair related. Um, so really the channel started off as just like a troubleshooting channel. So I was just troubleshooting and fixing problems all day long. Um, Alright, that should work. Alright, got it. Got it for a second. There it goes. Alright, got the cover off. So that's cool. It's like when you, I, I actually Googled my own, uh, or I Googled this video, like the Lasco rebuild, and I didn't see any videos of this taken apart. At least it was a different fan. Not this like stick van. So looks like there's like a kind of ball bearing pack here. Here's the main motor. Looks like it's an AC motor. So somewhere it's either locked up in here or there. But this feels really, really stiff. Right, so it looks like I can get the fan assembly off by doing that loosen that up right there at Phillips. So it's either, I feel like it's either going to be locked up at the motor or this bearing thing right here on the top bearing. But because it um, locked up, it might have destroyed that capacitor of the motor. It might have overheated those. So, don't know for sure. Right, it's definitely the motor because I have this top piece off here on this side. This feels like it's spinning good. Um, wow, it's a... Uh, it's like not even a ball bearing, it's just a bushing with like a rubber dampener in there. It's funny as I could design a new bracket with the ball skateboard ball bearing probably. Like if I remove that part right there, I could design a new bracket. Yeah, this thing is totally locked. Just make sure if you're, gonna, if you're not familiar with electronics, you should decharge that cap right there. Alright, decharge it by just shorting the two sides with the screwdriver. Looks like the motor comes out with four Phillips. I guess I could take the cop cover off too. But, yeah, this thing is so locked up. Right, I'll go over some safety, I guess. All right, got to make sure that's decharged, this cap. Make sure you get cooked. I had to open up the contacts a little bit here. Just want to make sure that thing is decharged. Even though it's not a really big cap, but still. All right, so it looks like this thing is directly soldered in here. So, I'm going to just take the front cover off here. Unscrew here. See if I can get that cover off. All right, so... Clearly, feels like it's locked up in the front. So what I'm looking for is rubbish uh, in the motor internals. But it looks like it's fine. I don't, I don't see any rubbish, but I can definitely. This thing won't spin on the top. I mean, this thing is locked up. I put something got in there or something. I'm not sure because I want to lock up. You know, it's a bushing. So usually, what happens is the bushings are just they'll get bigger over time. I mean, I only use this fan, you know, for a couple of months out of summertime, so it's. It's probably like three or four years old. But yeah, this thing's not spinning at all. At least on the bushing. So I'm gonna get some lube in there and then see if I can get it pushed out because I don't wanna so there's like a like a damper in there, so it allows it to pivot. Alright. So that loosens it up. I don't know what is what's in there? What is that stuff? I mean, what's that right there? Something to get that suck something in or something? I don't know, like once I got some lube in there, now it's spinning real freely. So, like I said, this thing was actually running, and then it just stopped overnight. 
so on its own. So I don't know what what happened there with that thing. So whatever this is, it doesn't look new. So I don't know. I, I really don't know. So as you can see, it's pretty dirty in there. Um, like I, I mean, a lot of these bronze bushings are sublubricating, oil impregnated bronze. So I don't know if that's if I don't I don't know if I need to put lube on this thing or not or. Um, yeah, so like inside, the, as they manufacture them, they impregnate oil inside the bronze. I'm going to grab some cleaner and grab some alcohol and clean all the way up inside this bushing. Alright, so I'm going to use a little Q-tip and get on the inside of this thing. And then get that going and then I think I'm going to buff the inside here on my buffing wheel. Because it does feel... Mm, slightly a little bit rough so I might sand it just slightly with some really fine sandpaper and then go back and buff it. See that rubbit right there? Um, I feel like it's off balance or something because see how the wear is on one side and not the other side? You know? So I feel like something might be off balance. Yeah, I'm aware that most people were not going to have a lathe in their garage. So, um, you could do this with a drill too. So, I'm going to just turn this on. Grab a little sandpaper. And I'm just going to polish this thing up a little bit like this. I also have air my cloth too. But I don't think it's as fine as this. So, I'm going to go a couple different grids. So I think up to like a 3000 grid probably. I want to get those marks out of there. online so I'm not familiar with these fan bearings but see that stuff in there I think it's like an oil absorbent material that looks kind of dry but all the bearings kind of have it so I'm going back and I'm cleaning them all up and I can kind of see um, um, see right there so it's, it's at first I thought something got something got caught in the fan but it's like almost like a sponge material that holds oil so I'm going to use some um, some of my Triflow here. Triflow actually has a Teflon in it. So uh, I'm just going to put this back together in reverse order and we'll fire it up and see if it works. All right, I should probably make sure the motor works before we put it back together. Let's put it back on. Huh. Not in power. Um, yeah, and also I burned out that star capacitor. Um, yeah, that star capacitor could have burned out. Like I said, when it overheated and locked up, unless there's some kind of thermal fuse too in here. Um, yeah, that's why I wanted to make sure it's. Like I said, there's usually a, some sort of thermal protection fuse or something in here that would... So if this thing actually locks up, it would shut it off. All right, so I have an ESR meter. Let's see. So I took the lead off. It seems like the capacitor is fine. So... Um... Guess on its thermal fuse. I'm trying to figure out, I'm going to see if I can trace it back up into this control board and see what's in the control board. Alright, so here is the main control board out. So I do see a fuse right there. Um, so I'm going to test the continuity there, and I don't know if there's a like a thermal protection fuse down here in the main inputs, but I'm getting power to the board. So, um, yeah, I've been looking everywhere. And actually, it looks like it's commanded. I, I can see the power come back down to the motor. Capacitor is fine. And uh, oscillation is working. So there, yeah, either there's an open winding or some sort of thermal fuse at the motor. Since I don't see an obvious thermal protection fuse, I'm actually testing power out. I'm getting power out, so it is being commanded to turn on. So somewhere maybe in this harness, or something in there. There must be some sort of like inline protection fuse somewhere. 
because it wouldn't be like literally it would be unsafe if you didn't have a pr thermal protection fuse. I don't know if you can see that, but I feel like there's something with the main power input coming in here, and then it comes back over here and that feeds the capacitor. But inside this little thermal sleeve, I feel like there's some sort of like something in there, like a thermal fuse possibly, and that's what I'm. Something that would have popped this motor. You gotta be careful with these little, these little tiny little windings, those copper things. That's what feeds the coils. So, right, there it is. What are the radiators? I might have, might have a little some, something I have, maybe an old fan or something of some sort. Um, so, I'm gonna check, test the continuity between here and here. And if it's open, that's why the motor's not spinning. I mean, this totally makes sense because. I mean, this is here for that specific purpose, so if the motor stops, so instead of burning up the motor, it basically hits the fuse. Yeah, fuse is open. Alright, so, now i got to figure out if it's even worth trying to find or buy one of these things. I'm not going to be able to see that, but it's a uh, 2 amp, 250 volt fuse. Alright, so i got some new thermal fuses that just came in. So they're actually 130 uh, degrees Celsius, 2 amp. So it's really the amperage rating is, is probably more important uh, than the... Uh, I mean, you, you want to keep it close as you can, but uh, the most important thing is when the motor starts to, like, lock up or it starts becoming, like, um, the bearings start wearing out, it becomes harder to turn. What will happen is um, it will actually draw more current, and then that's what you want to do. You want to, you want this thing to pop at 2 amp. And it might work better than this, but... <laughs> it's not have a firewall, but... I can see it better with the light. So, got the thing in there. So I might cover that up so you don't feel it, but then I'm also gonna cover this out of some shrink wrap like that. I have to figure out how to get that mess wrap back in there. Okay, I'm gonna flip the coil around. And that should be like that. All right, so I just plugged it in. And so what I was trying, I was trying to keep the repair costs under 50%. So I think it was like five or six dollars for the thermal fuses, but I actually saw these motors on AliExpress, and they were ten dollars, but they were twenty dollars a ship. So um, I don't know, it wasn't, it wasn't worth it. So if I had to buy a new motor, then I wasn't going to do it. I was just going to buy a new new fan. But I don't even know what's going to happen right now. So this miner might blow up. All right, cool. <clears throat> Alright, thermal fuse. So hopefully that that oil doesn't get all gunked up again and, and lock the motor up. So I'm um, hopefully by polishing the shaft, I mean that will help out. So I don't know if something got in there, you know, like it sucked something in and got in the shaft, or uh, over time it just you know built up a lot of like uh, you know debris from the from the um, pushing material. Hard to know for sure, but yeah, these aren't designed to be serviced. So um, all right, let's put the fan back together. Before I put the outside lid on, make sure it works here again. That's high speed right there. Alright, no squeaks. Yeah, I can actually tell, like I said, it's been a couple days since I've made this video or started the video. But yeah, I heard all the squeaking noise. It was like, it started kind of randomly, it would squeak here and there. And then all of a sudden, it just stopped one day. So, I mean, is this a practical repair? I'm not sure. I mean, I got like four hours into this thing, so. Um, then, uh, six or seven bucks. But I guess a new one's 70 bucks, but. Um, really, I, I've been taking things apart since I was a little kid to see how they worked. But it's interesting, so I learned a lot about these ther ther the thermal fuse and the motor, where it's located. It's the first time I've ever seen a thermal fuse inside the motor. Um, so, that was kind of cool. Figure that out. Kind of troubleshooted the board. Had to make a tool to get the what's it called off the anti tamper proof resistant thing off. <sighs> Cleaned up the bearing surfaces um, on my lathe. So yeah, it was pretty cool, pretty fun. So um, all right, hopefully this video helps somebody. Awesome.